Hey there, what's going on? I'm Andy, I'm a self-taught software developer, and in this video, I'm gonna go on a bit of a rant here. I'm gonna talk about some of the most common mistakes I see from people who are trying to teach themselves programming. And it's it's kind of crazy because I've seen a lot of people who are feel like they're spinning the wheels in the mud, getting really frustrated at not figuring this out quickly enough. Maybe they're spending years trying to do this. Maybe they're even just struggling to show up every day and put in the work, but I see a lot of people making common mistakes and I wanna help you avoid it. So that's what we're gonna dive into today. Now, if you're new here, I'm Andy, and I mentor people who are looking to go down the path of a self-taught developer. So people who are looking to learn the skills to do that, also who are looking to land a job without a computer science degree or any previous experience. So consider subscribing below. Make sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications anytime I put out a new video. All right, so without any further ado, let's just dive into this thing. So the big mistake that I see people make right off the bat when they get into this is that they don't set a firm date for when they're gonna start applying for jobs or start looking for their first clients if they're going the freelance route. And this is really important. When you don't set a firm date in the future, like say you're gonna start right now and you're gonna, you, you're dedicating yourself to software development, becoming a software developer. Well, if you don't set that date in the future, whether that's six months or a year, two problems arise. Number one, the first problem arises is that you tend to not be as committed to the process, right? Because if you think to yourself like, look, I'm just gonna start taking some tutorials, I'm gonna start seeing how things go and we'll just see how things go. Well, that tends to lead to people not fully engaging or not going all in. It leads to a lot of dabbling, which is not really how you learn this, right? So I see a lot of people who don't have that firm commitment in the future, that kind of date that scares them. And so they, they kind of just take their time, they mosey through, they just kind of, oh, dilly-dally here and there. And all of a sudden, for a lot of people, this is a wake-up call because all of a sudden a year later or a year and a half later, they haven't made any significant progress and they're feeling really bad about their prospects for the future. But the real problem is they just never set that hard date that kind of scared them a little bit. Like you should set a date that makes you a little bit nervous so that way you get that fire in your belly to kind of move forward. Now the second thing that I see is the problem in terms of not setting a hard date is that you'll tend to want to wait until the last possible moment to start applying for jobs. And instead of taking you know months, this may drag out into years. Waiting until you're ready, like I have that in one-handed air quotes, I guess two-handed is better, but having that in air quotes because a lot of people will say, oh, I gotta wait until I'm ready when it's like, it's kind of nebulous. When is that, when exactly are you gonna feel ready? Like what is the metric by where you're gonna measure yourself? For me, when I started applying for jobs, I just got advice from a mentor. Like one mentor told me based on like a 20 minute, uh, we just kind of went over some code. He's like, you're ready to go. And I trusted him, but I was still pretty damn scared. I was like, I'm gonna look like a fool out there. People are just not gonna like take me serious, but I ended up getting a job because I just trusted in what he was gonna say. And here's the thing. If you set a hard date for applying for jobs and you're not quite ready and you go out and you apply and nothing happens, then you can go back to the drawing board. It's not like you get one shot. You get as many shots as you want. This career is hot right now, or I should say this field is hot right now in terms of the, the supply and demand. So you wanna get into this faster and you don't wanna wait another couple of years. Who knows how long this is gonna last? So keep that in mind, set a hard deadline. If you don't make it, it's not the end of the world, but make sure you really commit to it. The second thing that drives me nuts is that people don't have a clear game plan or roadmap about how their skills are gonna progress and how uh, what applications they're gonna build. So when I reach out to people and I ask like, hey, what are you doing right now? How does that uh, link to your bigger picture of how you're going to <clears throat> you know, learn to code? A lot of times they just say, I don't know. They're just like, oh, well, I saw somebody said to build this application, so that's what I'm doing. Or, you know, I'm just watching this tutorial right now because I wanna learn JavaScript. When it's like, you need to have a clear idea of how your skills are going to progress over time and also what projects you're gonna build for your portfolio, they're gonna help you to actually implement those things that you're learning in those tutorials, right? So here's the thing, here's the key, and people get really scared when I talk about creating your own game plan or creating your own roadmap. You don't have to get this right. Okay, like a lot of people had terrible roadmaps and did just fine. The thing is you just wanna create one, like for, it could be as simple as knowing what programming languages you wanna work on, and then figure out you know, anywhere from four to all the way up to 10 projects if you really want that showcase those skills that progressively build in more and more skills or more and more technologies uh, that you can think of and that's really it. And then you just wanna follow the progression and, and just basically follow it and execute on it. Right? Don't worry so much about getting it right. The roadmap that you create on day one will change over time. You can iterate it. So a month later, after you've uh, put in a lot of work, after you've built a few things, after you've learned quite a bit, 
you'll have a better sense for how things can go. Or maybe you'll get a mentor at that time and they'll be able to guide you a little bit better. Or maybe you'll just have more research that you've done about your roadmap. But don't worry so much about getting it right. If anything, just focus on what you're doing now, execute on that, and then you can worry about that later. The next big mistake that I see a lot of people make is they're not tracking relevant data. Right, so I'll always ask people when they're looking to do this, I say, how many hours per week did you study this week? And a lot of people are just like, hmm, you know, I'm not really sure, probably 10, maybe 15. Well, was it 10 or was it 15, right? Because if it was 10, we need to get that up there. If it was 15, how can we squeeze out a few more hours? But not knowing exactly how many hours you're studying is a problem because you need, If here's the thing, if you measure something and you measure accurately, accurately, I should say, then you can potentially improve that. But if you don't even know how many hours you're studying, then it's hard to say like whether you should improve that or not. So you wanna start tracking relevant data, right? So I would actually recommend tracking your study time, but I would break that down to active versus passive learning, right? Because you wanna have a nice ratio there. So if somebody's struggling and I know that they're spending way too much time in passive learning, like tutorials and that sort of thing, or if they're spending a lot more time sort of um, in the active learning where they're doing hands-on stuff, I can then sort of diagnose. You need to spend more time in passive or you need to spend more time in active, right? And if you want more information about that, I have some learning strategies for self-taught programmers that I'd highly recommend you watch up here. Even beyond that, there is relevant data that you should track as well. So are you tracking your sleep? Are you tracking how many hours you spent in bed the previous night? That could lead to poor performance, right? So if you're not showing up for studying or your studying quality is not that great, maybe it's because your sleep quality isn't that great. So I'd highly recommend tracking that, do the best as you can in estimating it. Also track just your general mood on a day-to-day -day basis or your general study quality on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Because all these factors are important. If you're not able to show up and study, say like last week you just had a crappy week and you put in three hours of studying. Well, the next thing I would ask myself is what led me to do that? Let, what led me to make that mistake? And I would look at my sleep. Was my sleep quality low or did I not get that many hours of sleep? Because that can definitely contribute to that. Um, if my general mood on a day-to-day -day basis was negative or was very bad, then that could have led to that. So I'm going to then look at that and try to address those problems one by one. If I'm not sleeping enough, okay, let's figure that out. If my mood was crap, then I'm going to try to figure out like what were the things that were triggering me in my life that I need to avoid. All this information is relevant. And if you're not tracking it, then you're just trying to figure it out on the fly, which your brain is not that good at remembering. So don't leave it to your brain to try to remember these things. It's just not that accurate. Start tracking this relevant information so that way you can improve it if it needs to be improved. The last mistake that I see a lot of people make is that they focus on the end goal to the detriment of what they should be focused on right now, which is the work, which is sitting in the chair putting code on paper or putting code in the IDE, if you want to say it that way. Um, I really compare this to somebody who's maybe running a marathon, which is a long way to run, 26 miles, and constantly looking down at their GPS watch trying to figure out how many miles they have left to go. Like imagine every five seconds you're looking down, it would drive you nuts. It takes your mind attention away from what you need to be doing, which is running, and puts it on something that you you know, you know could be four or five hours away from, depending on how, how much time you have left in the race. So I see this a lot with people who are working on, let's say they started their first static website or something. So they just need to learn HTML and CSS. Well, maybe they're getting a little frustrated. And so what they do is they start to look up and go, man, I'm frustrated with HTML and CSS. Like, how am I ever going to learn C Sharp? How am I ever going to learn JavaScript? And then they start being super critical about their roadmap or their idea of the roadmap in their head if they don't have one. And then they start reading blog posts and the blog post is like, oh, no, actually, you should, read, you should do Python or you should do Haskell or you should do whatever programming language. And then they start getting really frustrated because they see that they're, you know, the finish line is so far away. People are telling them eight different things. Meanwhile, to actually figure out the thing in front of them, like the HTML and CSS, like whatever, you know, aligning the divs or, you know, centering a div or making a background color via CSS, the energy that they would need to solve that problem is right in front of them. They have the energy, but they're, they're using it for something else, right? So what my recommendation here is, is focus on the task at hand, focus on your deadlines, right? So your projects should have deadlines. There should be intermediate deadlines for your projects. There should be uh, deliverables that you're trying to meet. When you finish a deliverable, when you finish a project, then lift your head up, then look around, then do that research of like, okay, is my path correct? Should I maybe have a mentor look at it to give me advice on how I should proceed? Um, is there more research that needs to be done? 
Either way, that's an appropriate time when you can reevaluate. An inappropriate time is in the middle of things, you're trying to figure out a bug in one of your applications and you're starting to get that stress and nervousness that comes with that sort of emotional state. I've actually heard it like this and I kind of like the saying, it's like think big and think big in terms of the picture of where you're going, but act small, right? So the only thing you can really do on a day-to-day -day basis is just focus on the thing that you're trying to learn or the thing that you're trying to build. So act in a small way, but think big. And I think that will help to alleviate that issue of always thinking about how much more you have left to go. So I hope you enjoyed this rant. I don't know if this was ranty, but to me, this is about as ranty as I get. Uh, so if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. Other than that, guys, if you are a fan of my content and want to get even more of it, I highly recommend joining my Facebook group where I do a lot of live events. I answer questions. I cover other topics that I don't necessarily cover on YouTube. So if you want to join that, go to andysterkowitz.com forward slash group, and I'll see you there. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, guys. And uh, as always, peace out.